Jim goes hiking and gets lost in the woods. After a while, he gets really hungry. Jim wanders around and finds these three options, but only one of them is safe. Can you help Jim make the right choice? All the footsteps are leading to this berry bush, but not a single animal walked away from it. So the berries are probably poisonous. There's a scorpion creeping around these delicious bananas, so Jim should choose the apple tree. Timmy is packing bags for a hike in the mountains. Can you sort out extra items? It's unlikely he's going to need a hairdryer. Timmy's already taking a flashlight, and he probably won't have access to electricity. Therefore, he doesn't need this table lamp. And finally, he shouldn't take this heavy silver cutlery. A frog is at the bottom of a well. The well is 30 feet deep. The frog climbs up 5 feet every day, but it slips back 4 feet every night. After how many days will the frog be free? Twenty-six days. Wow! The frog climbs up by just one foot per 24 hours. So in 25 days, it will be at the level of 25 feet. And on the 26th day, it will make the final 5 feet jump and get out of the well. Billy here wakes up in a creepy cave and finds four tunnels leading outside. He only has one chance to escape. There's a hungry tiger inside the first tunnel. The second tunnel is filled with dust and spider webs. Yuck! There's a water-filled tank with sharks inside the third tunnel. And the fourth tunnel is full of venomous snakes. Uh -oh. Which tunnel is more or less safe to enter? Billy should choose the second tunnel. There are no spiders in this picture, only the webs. Crawling through them might be unpleasant, but at least he'll stay safe. Three tourists go hiking and get into trouble. Surprise, surprise! Can you guess who has more chances to survive? The third person. Although rats are gross, they're not fatal. Diana's boat was wrecked, and she ended up on a tropical island. The locals speak an unknown language, so Diana can't understand them. But still, she managed to spot this guy's wife right away. Can you see her too? It's the third lady. They have similar tattoos. Wendy is walking in the woods and falls into the trap of evil elves. She offers their king a deal. If I write your exact age on a piece of paper, you'll let me go. The king agrees and gives Wendy a piece of paper and a pen. In a minute, he lets her go. How did she do it? Wendy literally did what she said. She wrote your exact age on the paper. Ah, clever girl. Stan is walking home in a haunted city. He finds a nice spot to shoot a TikTok. But unfortunately, he falls into a basement. Stan looks around and finds four doors out. There's a hungry dragon behind the first door. The second way is filled with intense fire. There's a desert filled with hungry piranhas behind the third door. And venomous snakes are waiting behind the fourth door. Which way is the uh -oh. safest? The third one. Piranhas live in water, so they wouldn't manage to survive in the desert. Therefore, they're not dangerous for Stan. Jessica gets lost in the desert with just one small bottle of water. She has no clue where the nearest water source is. What would you suggest? Run as quickly as possible to find more water? Pour all water on her head to avoid sunstroke? Find a shady place and rest? 
stay where she is and shout for help as loud as possible. The third option is the best. When it gets darker and cooler, she can walk further and find help. Tilda is boarding a private jet. The crew greets her, and she spots an imposter among the crew members right away. Can you see this person too? The pilot is wearing a badge with a female face and name on it. Therefore, he had stolen someone else's ID. Tyler wakes up in the morning and finds out that his shadow is gone. Uh He goes to the local witch. She offers to choose from these six options. But only one of these shadows really belongs to Tyler. Can you spot which one? Only the first shadow fits perfectly. Nina and Sarah are both fond of swimming. But one of them is making a big mistake. Can you guess who? Nina. The sign says that the water in this river contains toxic waste. Meanwhile, Sarah can easily surf in large waves. Kyle and Betty go to a remote village to spend a romantic weekend. They see a cute little farm on the way and buy some pomegranates. They go on a picnic and enjoy the fruits. Each of them eats half of the pomegranate. In 10 minutes, Kyle gets very sick. Betty takes him to the hospital. Doctors check everything and come to the conclusion the pomegranate was poisoned. Kyle and Betty ate the same food and drank the same drinks all day. How is it possible that Betty still feels well? The poison was in the white seeds. Kyle ate them whole, while Betty only the red part. Allison is jogging in a park. Suddenly, she comes across an angry brown bear. It's getting closer and closer, but Allison manages to survive. What did she do? Started running as fast as she could? Fell to the ground and pretended to be unconscious? Or stood still and didn't move? What do you say? Usually, brown bears only attack people when they're surprised or feel threatened. Allison fell to the ground, and the bear didn't consider her dangerous. Peter is hiking in the middle of nowhere. Suddenly, he sees a mountain tiger in the distance. He's trying not to panic and begins to Uh look for a place to hide. There are three possible options, but only one of them is more or less safe. Can you help him make the right choice? If Peter climbs this tree, the tiger can easily get him there. Tigers actually like to swim. That's why it's not safe for Peter to escape by boat. But if he hides in this cave and blocks the entrance with a stone, he can call rescuers and wait for evacuation. Alice is 45 years older than her son Tom. Both of their ages contain prime numbers as the digits. Also, Alice's age is the reverse of Tom's age. Can you figure out their ages? The only single-digit prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, and 7. Here's a list of possible age combinations. 32 and 23, 52 and 25, 73 and 37, 53 and 35, 75 and 57. 72 and 27, but only the last combination meets the first requirement. The age difference should be 45 years. Therefore, Alice is 72 and her son is 27. Polly is an archaeologist. She excavates an ancient city. Suddenly, she finds a beautiful antique vase, or vase if you prefer. But one piece is missing. Polly also finds these ceramic fragments. Can you help her find the missing piece of the vase?
the fourth fragment fits perfectly. Dan lands with a parachute in a field in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Been there, done that. He finds the nearest bus station to get back to the city. But only one of these four buses will arrive at the station. Can you guess which one? It's the second bus. You can crack this maze much easier if you start drawing from the final destination. Amy leaves her workplace to go to the bathroom. She returns and finds out that someone had stolen all the cash from her wallet. Amy checks the wallet surface for fingerprints, but she only finds her own. The next day, Amy questions three of her co-workers. Mike says, Sorry, I've been out for lunch when the robbery took place. Oliver says, I've been feeling sick all morning, so I went home early. And Will says, I've been having a conference call with their clients. Can you spot the thief? It's Oliver. Take a look at his trash bin. He used gloves to steal the cash and then left them in the trash. He's the clumsy culprit. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. You wake up in a room with no windows or doors. The ceiling is extremely high, and the only way out is a closed hatch at the very top. Suddenly, the room starts filling with water. You've checked everywhere. There's no way to turn it off. You know that help is on the way, but they won't be here for at least five minutes. You're pretty sure the entire room will be flooded in two. You definitely can't hold your breath for that long. You look around and find three objects. A straw, some rope, and a bucket. Only one of them can actually save you in this situation. Which one should you choose, and how's it going to help? You should take the bucket. Flip it over and put your head inside when the water gets to head height. You'll have your very own small air pocket to help you breathe until help arrives. Uh-oh, you're in a building that just caught on fire. You need to escape, but the fire just keeps spreading and spreading. You're feeling dizzy, and the smoke is making it hard to see. And the heat? It's insane! Suddenly, you see three paths that lead outside, but it's not going to be so simple. There's no fire near the first exit, but it's on the opposite side of the burning room. The second exit is right in front of you, but the upper part is completely covered in flames. The final exit is through the kitchen. There's shattered glass everywhere, but the flames are barely touching it, and the door is wide open. Which exit should you take? Even though the first exit isn't on fire, an indoor blaze is totally unpredictable. Flames can pop up out of nowhere. Going through a kitchen is never a good idea in a fire. There might be exposed gas lines in there. Your best bet is to go for the closest path and crawl your way to safety. Well, you're stranded in the middle of a desert and are in desperate need of water. You crawl along, trying to find any source to hydrate yourself. As nighttime rolls around, the wind gets stronger and it starts to get cold. You sit down next to a tree. How are you going to find water in the middle of a desert? Grab two of the largest tree branches you can find. And then, rip your outer shirt and stretch it out over them, kind of like a sail. Shove the two branches into the sand to anchor them. The water in the atmosphere will get caught on the cloth and drip down for you to collect. Well, you're tied up on some railroad tracks and can't wriggle free. There's a train heading your way, and it doesn't look like it's stopping. Oh well. If you stretch your arms out, you can just reach a lighter, a small pocket razor, and a can of oil. Which can you use to escape? Pour the oil on the ropes holding you down. It'll act as a lubricant, and you'll be able to wriggle free. Taylor finished another awesome ice fishing session. He packed up his gear and walked back home with his dinner. Halfway back to the car, he realized he was being followed by a hungry cougar. It started chasing him. Taylor was so close to his car, but the cougar was gaining on him. What should he do?
he should fling the fish to the side to distract the cougar. Then he should ditch all his gear. It's just slowing him down. That way, he's got a chance of making it to the car before he turns into cougar chow. Well, you find yourself in a pitch black room. The room is huge and there are many hallways and corridors leading to unknown places. You need to find your way out before the room starts heating up like an oven. You only have two minutes. You can feel some pipes on the wall but nothing else. How can you save yourself? When the pipes start heating up, they'll probably turn red. It'll already be super hot by then, but you'll have just enough time to figure out the layout of the room and find a way to escape. Angela decided to go for a nice walk in the forest. Mm -hmm. About an hour in, she tripped and spilled all her water. No problem, right in front of her was a tiny lake, and close by, a small stream and a cactus. Which one should you use to get herself a refreshing drink of water? She should head for the stream. That lake isn't moving. That means it probably has bacteria living in it. And a single cactus won't have enough water to quench your thirst. Even though the stream is pretty small, moving water is almost always the safest option. What are those things? Oh, paw prints! Those are bear tracks heading to the forest, a wolf print coming out of the forest, and some elk prints heading toward a lake. Well, what's the best place to go if you're not into the whole being eaten thing? Think fast! The bear going into the forest probably scared that large dog off. Oh, you thought those were wolf prints? Mm, Not likely. Wolves mostly travel in packs. The bear is most likely chasing the elk, so they'll both end up at the lake. That means the forest's safe for now. You're stuck in a well in a small village, and the water's already up to your knees. There's a rope leading to the mouth of the well, but it's definitely not strong enough to hold you. You look around and find a bucket, some clothing, and a lighter. How do you escape? Shove the clothes in the bucket, tie the bucket to the rope, and light the clothes on fire. Then quickly hoist the bucket up. Chances are, in such a small village, someone will see the smoke and run over to help you. Kate finished her morning hike and decided it was time to go home. She saw a vintage jeep parked by the hiking path. While she was admiring it, a huge grizzly appeared in front of her. The bear didn't seem that interested in her, for now. But that could change any second. There was a large screwdriver on the floor by the jeep. What can she do to make sure the bear won't be interested in her? She can puncture the gas tank with the screwdriver and douse herself in gasoline. That way, the bear wouldn't be so interested in her scent. Eric was out camping and he needed some light to see in the dark. He reached into his tent, but his flashlight wasn't working for some reason and his phone only had 10% battery. He looked around and saw a bottle of water, an empty sandwich bag, his hiking boots, and a pillow. What can he do to make more light? He can take his phone and put it right next to the water bottle. The water inside the bottle will diffuse the light, making it much brighter. Adrian and Jack went rock climbing all day, then realized it was time to head home. After a long walk through the woods trying to get to their car, they realized they were totally lost. They'd never been in these woods before. They didn't have a clue what to do. What's worse, Jack collapsed from exhaustion and couldn't take another step. Adrian tried to lift him up, but Jack was too heavy. Night was approaching. He tried to call for help, but neither phone had any signal. His only choice was to venture out and seek help. He checked both gear bags and found a small pick hammer, some ropes, some sturdy locks, and a harness. What should he do? Adrian should put on the harness and tie all the ropes together to make one huge long one. Then he should tie one end to Jack and one end to his harness. That way, if he got lost in the woods, he'd be able to find his way back to Jack. That's one long rope. Nora's family was out for the day, and she was going to surprise them all with a triple chocolate raspberry cake. Right after plugging in her mixer, she heard a small pop, a fizz, then the electricity shorted out, and her precious mixer broke out in flames. Her phone was in the other room, 
Quick, help her! She's gotta stop the flames from getting worse while she sprints over to get her phone and call for help. What should you do? She could take some flour and dump it all over the mixer. It'll tame the fire and buy her enough time to call for help. Roy went out for a small walk in the forest right behind his house. He was having a great time, chucking stones at trees and thump. He launched the stone right into a beehive. A swarm of bees flew out and started chasing him. His house was pretty far away by this point, and there were tons of bushes and shrubs in his way. There was a huge open field in front of him with a deep lake in the middle. Where should he go to escape the angry bees? Jumping into the water to escape from a swarm of bees doesn't work. They'll just wait right above you and sting you when you resurface to breathe. The trick is to run as far away as you can, head for the house, and shut the door, Roy!